Let's bring in infection control epidemiologist Colin Furness, who is in Toronto. Hey, Colin, good to see you on this Friday. Good afternoon. So where do you think we stand here? We're looking at these numbers, more than 200 in Quebec uh, and Ontario and, and, you know, in BC and Alberta. You're hearing what the prime minister is saying. Uh, what's, what's happening out there, do you think? It's only in hindsight that we'll know whether this is the beginning of the second wave, but it's increasingly looking that way. I'm less pessimistic about the need for a severe lockdown because we're not in the same place we were in March. We know a lot more about COVID. We know a lot more about where COVID goes and what it likes and, and ways to resist it. We're wearing masks now and we weren't doing that in March. So there's a lot we have on our side. However, those numbers are going to continue to climb. That seems to me to be something that we will not avoid. Yeah, and also that, you know, because there's more compliance, that's going to help us as well, even if there is not total compliance. And then we're seeing, you know, uh, karaoke bars close down in Quebec. We see schools in Alberta. Uh, we see worries about weddings and parties in Ontario and, and, you know, nightclubs in Vancouver. We need to close establishments where people hang out together without masks. So I'm talking about bars, in restaurant, dining, gyms. We need to do that. We need to do that now. We should have done it last month. Um, and so I'm really hoping we do. Okay, the other thing I'm curious about is the so-called twindemic. And I know you've heard this term where, you know, the seasonal flu is coming and uh, we also have COVID-19. And so it's kind of like a one-two punch. The flu is extremely hard to predict. Its characteristics are different every year. The optimist in me says this, everything that we're doing to protect ourselves against COVID is also effective against flu and common colds and everything else. So in, in my mind, we have a reasonable chance of people just not getting sick. If we all do what we're supposed to do, we don't get COVID, we don't get flu, we don't get common colds. However, I urge everybody to get a flu shot. We should leave nothing to chance. We should leave no protection on the table. We should take that. And if we do that, if we all do that, I think we could end up with, ironically, in some ways, a healthier winter than average. All right, you're joining us from Toronto, and so there are 71 new cases announced in the city today, and also this interesting wrinkle about uh, the city creating an isolation centre, Colin, uh, for folks who cannot safely isolate at home, uh, about $14 million or so for that. I'm curious how you think that might help sort of slow the spread. It's a fantastic idea. It's something the city has been asking for for some time. It reflects the fact that we know that there are neighborhoods, there are populations where there is overcrowding because there is poverty. And if one member of that household gets COVID, then everyone gets COVID. So this is a tangible way to break the chain of transmission for people who cannot do effective self-isolation with maybe, say, a large family living in a one-bedroom apartment. It's significant that the money is federal. We've managed to find a way to circumvent our chief medical officer of health who does not favor these kinds of directed interventions. And I think that is fantastic. I'm very grateful to the federal government for that help and for the Toronto Board of Health for taking that step. We appreciate your time, Colin, as always. Thank you for this on this Friday. Thanks.